how to clean the main heat exchanger on a Vicara boiler. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I've got a very special video for you today. I'm going to show you how to clean the square heat exchanger in a Vicara boiler. We're going to fully strip it down but what I've got, I've got a special guest today. I've got David from Vicara and David's going to show us how to do it in real time. So this this job will take quite a long time to strip down and service correctly so if you're an end user watch this video and see what your installers or your gas engineers should be doing and how long it takes because it does take a while to strip and service these boilers and if you're um, if you're new into the industry this should be a really good video for you to watch what i'm going to do because of camera angles, it's a little bit awkward to get in with camera as David's talking. So I'll put some overlays on as it as he's talking as well, just to try and help you and assist you going forward. And please remember these videos are designed for gas safe registered engineers or people that are training to be a gas engineer and they're under supervision. So never work on a boiler unless you're gas safe registered or you're competent to do so. Hello, I'm David uh, Ischeck. I'm a trainer for Vicara. I'm up with Alan Hart in his new house. I came to pick up a troublesome a heat exchanger we had to change for him uh, that, uh, uh, for our technical department to look at. Um, we are chatting around and uh, he said, why do you think it happens? And I don't know, our technical department find out things like that. But we were talking about servicing requirements. And one of the servicing requirements of our boiler here, this heat exchanger we have in here, is that the every year you make sure that the top of the heat exchanger is clean. And uh, Alan says, well, can you do a short video on how we do that? And I said, yeah, I'm here, let's do it. So everything's been turned off, made safe. So I'll take the, um, I'm not talking about anything else about setting the boiler up. Alan's done other videos on that. So what I would do is remove the outer case of the boiler and to get to the uh, heat exchanger here to make sure there's no debris laying on the top of the heat exchanger we need to take the top plate off. Now I'm going to need my glasses and first of all the electrics is off so I would disconnect the fan remove the cabling out of the way it also gives you a better chance of seeing what's going on. And the first thing I do is remove the fan. Four 8mm nuts. Two have to be removed, two can be just slackened off. So here and at the back. It's the two at the back that on this side that need to be removed. You'll see when I do remove the fan, the two on this side are on slots, so the fan will slide and come out. I only have to loosen this one. We have one at the back which I can't, we won't be able to get on camera. So you might not be able to see on the camera. Just see a bit of it is the gas pipe going to the mixer. So I'm going to take that. It's held in with a um, split pin. So I'm going to remove that. It means I can give myself a bit more room. That's the split pin there. It gives me a little more room. I can pull the gas pipe out of the side of the fan and move it to one side and now I can reach the nut on the far side. I'm doing, I've got a set of um, adjustable, uh, a ratchet set which makes this easy but I'm doing it with a simple open-ended spanner because I think most of you guys will have an open-ended spanner. So I'm sorry I've got to get in front of the nut to, to do it so I'm going to obstruct your view. There. I might be able to do 
to not offer my fingers here, or else I'll like a bit of luck. So take this one out. And slide the fan to one side. The fan and the snorkel comes out thus. Okay, and this is a, uh, I think yours is a 29 kilowatt bottle, so it's got three screws at the front, three screws at the back, uh, bolts at the back, and one in the centre of either side. So I'll make it a little bit faster now and use a ratchet. New heat exchanger because the other one hadn't been uh, had been blocked up completely, so we, we replaced the heat exchanger. So what I'm going to find inside is a, a brand new heat exchanger, really. So I know I'm taking this off uh, just for show. Get that one out. There's a couple. There's a couple more at the back or one at the side here. The one at the front here, but the, sorry, at the right hand side, holds a overheat thermostat on the side of the heat exchanger. I've still got two more to undo at the back. Because of the shape of the flue collector going down at the back, I can't get a uh, ratchet socket on it. So I do it with, a, with an open end of I'll have to move the front of the screen a bit to I'm not as flexible as I used to be. Now on the, there's a 25 kilowatt heat exchanger and a 30 kilowatt heat exchanger. The 25, you only have two at the front, two uh, bolts at the front. But on the, on the 30 and the 32, you've got three bolts at the front. So I'll, put that down. I'll try and get my hand in here. Now I've got to disconnect the probes from uh, the cabling. So I'll take out my hub. Neither of those pliers. I remove the, I know it's probably difficult for you guys to imagine, but the spark electro connection is at the back. So I'll remove that. And then I've got the Rectification connection. Let me just use it. We put a lot of um, earth in for a cover around that so it gets stuck on quite tight. There we go. It's, a, it's like a connection to a spark plug on a motor vehicle. So we've got everything off. If this wasn't a new heat exchanger, this is loose because it's so new. But I would find if it's been a year or two, you would have to then put a screwdriver in here, just gently prise up the corner until the top plate is free of the heat exchanger. Lift up gently. And then out. Here's the burner. Oh, on this particular model, it's a ceramic burner. I make sure the probes are nice and uh, the right distance apart and clean. But the object of the exercise, it might take uh, one minute, it might take uh, a further 10, 15 minutes. Is to get a torch and look inside at the top of the heat exchanger. Obviously this is a week old so it's spotless. Make sure there's nothing laying on the top of that heat exchanger that would obstruct the flue flow through the boiler. Because you've got to remember, we've now got um, to a point where we expect incredible efficiency from our boilers. So this would come in at about a 93% efficiency 
um, for space heating over a year. What we've got here, what we're trying to do with the engineering, and this is the same on all boilers, what manufacturers are trying to do is get as much heat out of the flue gases as possible. And the flue gases up here might be 950 to 1000 degrees. The heat exchanger cross tubes start here. So you've got 1000 degrees here, we've got a nylon flue, 100, 100, 120 mil away. So, and that will be between, say, depending on the return temperature, that would be maybe uh, between 76, 86 degrees. So we're stripping off 900 degrees in four inches, 100 mil. Return water comes in here, goes across zigzags in a series of tubes, across in another series of tubes again, and then again, and then around the heat exchanger before exiting the boiler. So we've got one or two litres, the equivalent of 30 of um, 10 electric kettles going into one or two litres, 30 kilowatt hour heat transfer in this place. So you need a clean heat exchanger to extract the heat from the flue side to the water side. Aluminium helps in that because it's extremely conductive, but it needs to be cleaned. Stainless steel doesn't uh, need so much cleaning, but you still need to take the top off to access the heat exchanger. But if you came across a stainless steel heat exchanger, which is uh, cross tubes like this, you would have twice as, at least twice as many tubes, and it would be actually physically bigger because, you, because it's not as conductive and you need a greater heat transfer surface to get the heat from the flue side to the water side. That's why it's important to keep these heat exchangers clean. Now, what I'll do is reassemble. Reassemble is in the, in the same order. But one thing I will note, mention, in our book, we always say, uh, we always tell you if you need to change a gasket or washer. This washer, if it's in good condition, does not need to be changed every time you take it off. But if you, if you regularly look at our boilers, uh, the 25 or the 30 or 32, um, what you'd look for is just, I'll ask you to remember, the um, larger heat exchanger is 40 mil wider than the, than the 25. So you'd need two gaskets to carry with you if, you if you don't know the output of the boiler you're going to. One other thing, we don't ask you to change any other gaskets or, on, or seals uh, except one unless it's mentioned in the manufacturer's instructions. It's always mentioned in our manufacturer's instructions. I haven't disturbed it, this haven't needed to disturb it, but the connections on either side of the gas valve, if you loosen those unions, we ask you to change, it says in the manufacturer's instructions, change that washer when you do so. David, <clears throat> can I just ask you what you'd use to clean it out? If, if it had been mucky? Oh, right, right. yes, of course. Well, um, I've had guys, we do a chemical. Um, I personally find, the best thing I find is a stiff brush or a screwdriver. If there's anything hard baked on, break it off. It's quicker than waiting for the chemical to work. I know guys have, I can't endorse this, but I know guys have used hot water and bleach and um, white vinegar, white vinegar. And you can actually buy a stronger white vinegar. There's a 5% and a 6%. Uh, acetic acid in vinegar, try and use the stronger of the two if you can get hold of it. But you tend to wait for that to work. So I use a stiff brush um, and, uh, or maybe a screwdriver if it's baked on hard and clear any little nodules of um, oxide that have built up on the heat exchanger. Thank you very much for that David. David's now going to put our boiler back together. Um, just a few bits from me. David was very keen just to point out how long a service on these would take. So it, it took David 30 minutes to fully strip this down and put it back together again. And that wasn't with cleaning it. So it could take 40 minutes just for this part of service. Just a little tip from me, and David's not said this, but on a service, I would be pumping the expansion vessel up. So it's very easy on this just to disconnect the expansion vessel 
So I've took the expansion vessel off so that you can see and you can get into this and see this easier. If you did do it that way, then you can get into the nut here a little bit easier as well. But that, that's up to you. The more you do with these, the faster you'll get, I suppose. If you do have any questions on this, this is installed in my house at the moment. So I can do it any videos you want. We can test any components you want. We can strip anything apart. Whatever you want to do on it, we can do on this on this channel. So just put some comments below and let me know what you want to do. I hope you found this video of some use. Um, thanks for watching. If you can as well, if you could just put a comment below, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'd be very grateful. Thank you.